right, so finally, after five years and a few failed attempts, here is the corner turning 4x4, which, uh, as I'll get into later, is not actually a 4x4 at all, but it certainly looks like it. Um, at a glance, this puzzle, uh, besides the fact it's a FDM 3D printed puzzle, you really could not tell that anything is going on with this puzzle. The exterior looks exactly like a 4x4. And the outer layers turn like a 4x4. Uh, you can turn them pretty much exactly how you'd expect. The differences come in with the middle layers. They're locked. You cannot turn them. So, how do you scramble the edges and corners, or in centers? Well, corner turns. Every single one of the corners on this puzzle can rotate in a 2x2 two two block. And by combining that with the outer turns, you can scramble this puzzle. The turning quality on this puzzle is surprisingly good for an FDM 3D printed puzzle. Of course, it's going to be a little bit catchy. It's never going to turn quite as well as uh, injection molding, but not bad. And the amazing thing is, and you know, given the track record of the puzzles I make, this is uh, particularly surprising. It can corner cut about half a cubie. So corner cutting on a uh, 3D printed puzzle of mine is a, a rare thing indeed. Uh, I can't really reverse corner cut. Well, a little, but not very much. It's it's mostly mostly normal corner cutting. And this puzzle can also do a little bit of corner twist corner cutting. Though it's not much of an issue. Generally the corner twists stay in place while making outer layer turns. This puzzle went through four iterations before I finally arrived at the uh, finished product. Here is the original prototype from 2016 it's just a mass-produced 4x4 with some, like, plastic cut out of it, so you can kind of make this turn. Now you can see that the the pieces kind of separate, they sort of fan out, which is uh, kind of a result of really forcing a turn that's that's not actually possible. And you can see on the, the th fully 3D printed version, that issue uh, completely goes away. Then we have this, which was my first attempt at 3D printing uh, a copy that would not turn on the middle layers and could turn on every corner. Now this puzzle, as you can see, is just absolutely hideous. It looks archaic. It looks like a caveman version of a, of a 4x4. The turning is beyond terrible. If you wiggle... Um, even the outer layers are just almost unturnable. This puzzle has no right to be as bad as it is. I spent so much time on it, and it... Oh, did I just... Okay, no. A piece just popped out. I thought I broke it for a second here. You can see these pieces are just... They look like handmade pieces. They're just... Just a disaster. Anyways, this puzzle pretty much doesn't work. I would not consider it a fully functional version. Which brings us to this. This is a puzzle I made quite recently, and it was uh, a much more successful attempt at making this puzzle. Um, it does work reasonably, well, yeah, reasonably well. Uh, everything's a little, you know, more catchy. These turns also hold together very nicely because I completely changed the logic. Now, here's the thing. With this puzzle, I was still thinking of this as a 4x4, so I designed a 4x4 in 3D and then attempted to just kind of like recreate the hand mod except in 3D, and the results were absolutely terrible. Whereas with this puzzle, I realized we're not really dealing with a 4x4. It looks like a 4x4, but it's truly, it's just a 3x3. Three three. Um, with the edges split in three and the centers split into five pieces. So with this one, I designed a 3x3 three three and then designed these turns to split everything apart. Uh, and the results are okay. 
honestly, turning the outer layers feels like you're grinding pepper. It feels like a pepper grinder, which is not a great feeling uh, when you're playing with a puzzle. So, uh, you know, after three rather lackluster attempts, first starting with a hand mod, then designing it as a 4x4, then designing it as a 3x3, I decided we needed to move on. Now I was thinking, okay, well, 3 by 3 didn't work super well, and I was like, well, you know, this puzzle is both a corner turner, but also kind of a face turner. So, perhaps, the what I should do is design this as a pyraminx. No, I'm just kidding. It was just 3 by 3 design again, except done better this time, and the results are really nice. So, let's take a look and see how this puzzle uh, works. Now, there's there's kind of a lot of uh, pieces. Like, this looks so similar to a 4x4 edge, but it was derived from a completely different uh, design process. And that's that's what I kind of think is cool about this puzzle. It's, it's really very close to being like a 4x4, and it has pieces that look a lot like 4x4 pieces. Like, you'd be mistaken for thinking, yeah, this is just a normal 4x4 center. It looks so much like a normal 4x4 center. Okay, so this is what this puzzle looks like on the inside. It has uh, what looks like a, a sort of an internal 3x3 core. Uh, I used a, a Diane Zanchi screw and core, which works very nicely. This puzzle does have springs. The corners are a bit weird. So they look pretty standard like a 4x4 corner, except they're split in two. So this is a little internal piece that uh, basically acts as the corner stock of the, the 3x3 part of this puzzle. It just sort of fills space and keeps everything uh, running a little smoother. And then we have the actual uh, body of the corner. It's rounded at the base, and it fits into a rounded groove and rotates. So this is where the corner twisting happens. So it, it has all the stability of a normal corner, but it also has the twisting ability. This puzzle also has a clicking mechanism uh, with four uh, ball bearings embedded into the centerpieces, which fit into a little groove on the feet of these little centers. So they just pop in place and click in and out. And that is really the key to making this puzzle turn well. Uh, when I originally made this thing, it did not have these uh, this clicking mechanism. And uh, the actual corner twist turns were way better. Like, they were super buttery smooth, because you can see here it's, it's clicky. It's very clicky. Um, the original turns were just buttery smooth, and that was a problem, because when I was trying to do uh, outer turns, a bunch of the corners would, like, twist, and it would lock up, and it just wouldn't work. So, uh, this puzzle does need a clicking mechanism, but man, does it really make a big difference in the turning quality. Alright, so scrambling and solving this puzzle is really fun. Solving this puzzle is pretty simple. If you can solve a 4x4, um, you can definitely solve this. It's the same basic logic. You reduce it down into a 3x3, and once you've reduced it down into a 3x3, it's just like solving it as normal. What I find really interesting about this puzzle is you're encountered with so many familiar cases that you've seen a million times from solving 4x4. But you have to come at them from a different angle, using a different set of moves, and it's a really interesting uh, little challenge. Now, this puzzle, interestingly enough, will never get OLL parity. Now, this puzzle can still have PLL parity, which is quite a pain to solve on this puzzle, by the way. But there is actually a second kind of last layer parity that does not come up on a normal 4x4, but can on this one. Back in 2009, 
when I first started cubing, I noticed, as I'm sure all of you have noticed, that you can't ever have just one twisted corner. If you do, that means that you either did not assemble the puzzle correctly after a pop, or you accidentally twisted one during the solve. It cannot be set right by any sequence of moves. Of course, I had been told that it was impossible back then, but that didn't stop me from spending hours trying to maybe somehow figure it out. Well, 12 years later, I'm happy to present an algorithm that really can solve just one twisted corner. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future puzzles.